This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The Quarantine Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We turn now to look at how the U.S. has continued to deport thousands of people during the coronavirus pandemic, causing a dangerous spread of COVID-19 to Central America and the Caribbean. In Guatemala, at least 117 people deported from the U.S. have tested positive for the virus as of May 4th, making up some 15 percent of Guatemala's cases. Guatemala had temporarily suspended deportations from the U.S. after dozens of deported immigrants on a single April 13th flight tested positive, but allowed deportations to resume under the promise of stringent testing. But last week, someone who was deported after testing negative was confirmed COVID-19 positive after arriving in Guatemala. Guatemala's health minister, Hugo Manroy, has called the U.S. the Wuhan of the Americas. On Monday, Immigration and Customs Enforcement reversed plans to deport five immigrants who tested positive for COVID-19 after it was reported on in the media. A deportation flight from San Antonio, Texas, to Port-au-Prince, Haiti, departed with 50 passengers who were sent to hotels to quarantine at the Haitian government's expense upon arrival. The same day, Florida Democratic Congresswoman Frederica Wilson introduced the Haitian Deportation Relief Act, which calls for the suspension of deportations to Haiti, saying they are, quote, tantamount to a death sentence for Haitians who are living with compromised water and sanitation systems and do not have access to the sanitation measures we've undertaken in the United States, unquote. This comes as calls to halt all deportations from the U.S. during the pandemic are growing. Well, for more, we're joined by two guests. In Miami, Florida, Edwidge Danticat is with us. She's the Haitian-American novelist, author of a number of books, including The Art of Death, Writing the Final Story, and The Farming of Bones, which won an American Book Award. Her piece in the Miami Herald is headlined, U.S. deportations to Haiti during coronavirus pandemic are unconscionable. And in The New Yorker magazine, she's written about the ripple effect effects of the coronavirus on immigrant communities. Also joining us from Guatemala City is journalist José Alejandro García Escobar. He is a reporter with the independent media outlet Agencia Ocote. His most recent work in Guatemala highlights the health and economic impacts faced by undocumented Guatemalan workers living in the U.S. in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Edwidge Danticat, let's begin with you. Can you respond to the U.S. deporting? Um, COVID-positive uh, Haitians back to Haiti. What are you calling for? Well, these deportations are obviously a threat to Haiti and a threat to the entire region. Uh, 200, nearly 200 organizations, uh, professionals in, in health care, people who, who work with uh, immigrant um, communities, have called for the administration to stop these deportations and find alternatives to detention that are contingent with uh, COVID-19 um, regulations. But these deportations have continued. And since uh, in April, when the, the first set began, we've had three people test positive for COVID-19 after they've arrived in Haiti. Uh, it's, it's a disgrace. It's, it's dangerous. Uh, really for the health of the communities that uh, the, these folks are being returned to. And so we are, uh, you know, as a community, um, as people who, whose loved ones are affected or will continue to be affected by this, are calling for the d deportations to stop. And what is the response of the U.S. government? Well, initially, the... Uh, you know, the, the, yesterday, for example, I, uh, I texted with one of the uh, wives of one of the men who had tested COVID positive and in the end didn't end up on the flight. But she said that he was taken out of uh, the quarantine where he was and was not retested, for example, before he was returned back to the general population while he was uh, in detention. Uh, ISIS said that they would test people before they were returned, um, they were deported. But asymptomatic people can still spread the virus, uh, obviously, and people have tested positive once they've arrived in Guatemala, for example, and in the previous case uh, in Haiti. In your piece in The New Yorker magazine, Edwidge, you cite a common saying that whenever Haiti sneezes, Miami catches a cold. 
But in the midst of this pandemic, it clearly is the case that the reverse is true. Can you talk about the pandemic's effect on Haitians where you live in Miami, uh, as well as this, uh, what this means for their loved ones at home? Well, we've watched. Um, we're in a community where people are, work as home health aides, or in the tourism industry, or in the service industry, or hospitality industry, and so many people have been furloughed or have lost their jobs. And Haiti counts a lot on remittances. Uh, a lot of people who are working here are working a job for, you know, like my father was uh, when I was a kid, was working one job for to support himself and another job to support someone back home. So this will also have ripple effects in Haiti, in which people who have lost their jobs here or who might have fallen ill, we've had a lot of COVID cases, for example, in the, in the population in New York. And, and so that will certainly have effects on the economy, on, on the ability of people in Haiti who are already unable to shelter in place who have to work in, in, in the informal economy, this will also reduce their ability to, 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 to feed themselves because a lot of family members here are also affected by the COVID-19 financially, which will then um, lead to greater uh, hardship financially and medically back home. Edwidge Dantica, you also talk about Haiti's history with what you've called past collisions with microbes. Talk about what happened after the earthquake a decade ago. Well, after the earthquake, when it seemed like this was the worst thing that could possibly happen, when 300,000 people uh, had been killed and close to 2 million people were homeless, you had the United Nations um, come and basically poison one of the uh, central rivers in Haiti, causing a cholera epidemic that killed uh, 10,000 people and, and infected uh, close to a million people. Now, the UN has never quite taken the proper responsibility. Recently, some of their own monitors have come out and said that they have not done enough um, in terms of compensating families or creating uh, the health structures. Uh, so the, the, the UN and the, the cholera epidemic has left Haiti even more vulnerable in terms of being able to, to deal with this current uh, pandemic. I wanted to bring Jose Alejandro Garcia Escobar into this discussion from Guatemala City. If you could talk about what happens to Guatemalans who are deported from the United States uh, to Guatemala City. Uh, well, recently it has started that a new shelter has opened up really close by to the airport. So people have been uh, moving the deportees to that shelter. However, uh, on May 13th, uh, a group of 71 persons, 71 people were moved to that shelter and they only spent a couple of days there. Uh, a spokesperson from migration said they were tested and that they were okay, but still they were only there for a couple of days and they were moved to their original cities. And talk about what is the scope of the problem? How has this happened? The Guatemalans who are being deported from the United States, the response of Guatemalans where you are in Guatemala City, the response of the government who stopped these deportations, but then has allowed them to resume. Well, at the beginning, there was little to no information. When we got our first uh, confirmed cases in mid-March. And there were barely any information about what was going to happen to uh, immigration to the Portis flights. But as uh, cases began on the rise, uh, suddenly people had to address this issue. Uh, as you said during the introduction, uh, uh, immigration stopped the deportation flights for a couple of times to, to strengthen the measures. Uh, then there was that awful flight on April 15th when there were up to 25 percent of all deportees tested positive. So things have been moving up and down with this issue. Uh, the government has rarely addressed it. it this has been mainly from immigration, uh, from the immigration department here in Guatemala. Uh, but still, you have a lot of people infected going back to small communities with little to no access to health uh, facilities. So it's, it has been creating a great impact in the country, bringing, bringing people infected with the coronavirus.
You say that the U.S. is being referred to now in Guatemala as the Wuhan of the Americas? Yes, that was, this was a quote uh, made by Hugo Monroy, our health minister. Um, if you could talk about what the United the Guatemalan government is doing to hold the U.S. accountable, and if you can talk about the latest people who've been deported, one uh, the U.S. said was uh, COVID negative, but when he arrived in Guatemala City, he was positive. Well, the couple of times that the, the flights had, had stopped, uh, allegedly, was to strengthen the measures and the testings in the U.S. to to make sure that the people that were getting deported were getting deported were healthy and they wouldn't infect anyone in Guatemala. Uh, obviously, this has not been the case entirely. Uh, we have been getting reports of, of people coming, with, coming in with certificates uh, signed by ICE saying that they were healthy. But the certificates are, are, are allowed here in Guatemala. They can be made no longer than 20 sec 20 to 72 hours prior to their deportation. So, but people have been coming in, and still we have a few cases, obviously not as high as the one we got in April 15. But still, this has been—we uh, still get flights with a couple of people infected in, in the flights. Jose, can you talk about the Guatemalan residents who've been placing white flags outside their homes and talk about the double pandemic, the pandemic that people deeply concerned about COVID-19, and then also um, the effects of uh, not having jobs, running out of food and money? Well, a lot of people in Guatemala uh, rely on informal economy. You mean, uh, I mean, sell people selling stuff in the streets, people selling food in the streets. So pretty quickly, as soon as we we, had our, we hit our first case and the government began putting on measures, people began losing their jobs or people began losing their income. So rapidly, you, you would see people out on the streets uh, waving white flags uh, as a signal of they don't have any money, they don't have any food. So Guatemalans might is, uh, there's a strong coalition of Guatemalans helping other Guatemalans. The government promised a thousand quetzales, which is a little under two hundred dollars for for families and and small businessmen and small businesswomen. However, uh, they then mentioned that uh, those benefited from this um, one thousand quetzales, they needed to uh, be within the formal economy, informal economy. But they they needed to show proof of their taxes. So a lot of people don't extend a receipt when they when they work out in the streets. So a lot of people have not been getting this. And just last night we had these new measures that the the city the the, the country is closed until Monday morning. So a lot of people are not going to be allowed out into the streets to go into to receive aid from other Guatemalans to go to to local restaurants who have been helping people who don't have any jobs or food. So right now this weekend is going to be a little. Uh, chaotic with with what happens with these people in this last minute, the effect on the the health care system overall in Guatemala um, and how difficult it already is before dealing with the pandemic. Uh, yes, uh, just a few days ago, uh, th there have been a few developments in the hospitals. Uh, doctors in hospitals and, and nurses have been out into the streets uh, outside the hospitals protesting that they don't have enough. Uh, material to take care of the of the patients. Uh, suddenly, the as you mentioned, the health system in Guatemala is overwhelmed. We have reached a little over 1,300 cases, active cases here in Guatemala, and this has put our health system really uh, on, on the on the on the edge of their seats. And let me end with Edwich Dantica, the situation with the health care system, with the hospitals in Haiti right now. Well, uh, certainly. The, there's a, a medical group that's uh, advising the president that's come out and said uh, that Haiti is just not ready, and the deportations are adding fuel to the fire. Um, we don't have the, the, these ventilators. We don't have the beds. Um, and the, the more exposure that we're getting from this exportation of the virus, the more dangerous it is for a country that has suffered already so much through—, through other exposures uh, that could have been avoided. Uh, and so people go to a wedding and, and someplace and the virus spreads. It, and these are called super spreader events. These deportations are international super spreader events and are putting a great deal of lives at, at risk. 
and 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 are offering them up to a medical system that in the you know the, the richest countries have uh, suffered. Imagine what it would be like in a place like that's been so battered and so mistreated, uh, like 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 we have been. Haitian people are strong, but this is just uh, this is a lot. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining us, Edwidge Dantakat, Haitian American novelist. Um, we will link to your piece in the Washington Post at democracynow.org, speaking to us from Miami, and Jose Alejandro Garcia Escobar, Guatemalan journalist, speaking to us from Guatemala City. When we come back, for the first time in history, the Supreme Court is holding its oral arguments remotely. We'll look at a case they heard Wednesday that could shape the outcome of the future of of presidential elections, and we'll talk about whether democracy can survive the pandemic here in the United States. Stay with us.